This is the Criterion Creeps Podcast. And tonight we're talking about Paul Robeson and the Paul Robeson Portraits of the Artist box set, Spine 369 in the Criterion Collection. Uh, we'll be doing this for four weeks, RJ. Can you believe it? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And uh, we're kicking off with the, the first disc in this box set. Uh, the Emperor Jones from 1933, directed by, by uh, Dudley Murphy, and uh, a, a short documentary uh, that has its own spine number for some reason, Paul Robeson Tribute to an Artist from 1979, directed by Saul Turrell. Um, mm. So the one thing I noticed immediately or thought of, this is the first box set, and I don't know if there's very many of them, but uh, this is the first box in the Criterion Collection that is structured around an actor as opposed to an, a director or even like an actor director. You know, you're like Laurence mm-hmm. Olivier's or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, this is it. This is the this one's based on the guy in the movie rather than the man behind or more woman uh, behind the camera. Because eventually we get to, we start getting those uh, Ingrid Bergman box sets. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, there's not too, there's no there's not a lot of uh actor box sets from Criterion. I mean there's uh there is like um a Brad Dourif box set, but only I own it. It's, it's rare. I I'm I'm the only one who has that. Uh it, it was signed by Gary Collection. Not a lot of people know him. Um and we call it the uh what was this one called again? This box set? Portraits of the Artist. Yeah, the one we call is a portrait of an ass grabber. Right. So, uh, not that Brad Dourif is, but um, his movies grab grab you by the ass. Yeah. Because his performance with, with is so consent. Good. With consent, yeah, 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 yeah. No. Yeah, we're not doing anything weird here. Consensual ass grabbing. So, Roger, what, press play. What can yeah. you tell me about Paul Robeson? Uh, what? don't you want to know about Paul Robeson? Number one why, fan here. Why does he have a box set? Uh, civil rights activist Paul Robeson. Uh, the man who brought us songs like um, uh, All I Want for Christmas is You. Like, incredible songs, Jerry. Incredible songs. Um, I don't know, dude. I just, I just learned about this guy. He was a civil rights dude and, and a communist. Yeah, but a lot of that. Even though, like, I don't people, know. A lot of people are becoming communists now, so I get it, right? Right, <laughs> the good, the right kind of communist. Well, well, what about like the 1950s in America? How well, do they, capitalism. How, how do they feel about that? Capitalism wouldn't have it, Jarrett. Yeah. So, but uh, I would call him a civil rights activist mm-hmm. and a man. Who had a real nice voice. That's right, RJ. What, what, what did he like to sing about? He liked to sing about, um, like, grinding, like, on a skateboard. And how work was tough, but, uh, or, like, how high school is tough and the exams were tough. But, like, one day you'll get a girlfriend kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and he kind of whipped his hair, like, and he had eyeliner and stuff like that. I think he sang mostly about suffrage. You know about suffrage? What about rivers? Uh, are they old? Do they ding like cell phones? Uh, actually, that was my my computer. Your computer? Oh yeah, J- J- Jizz Dog doesn't actually own a cell phone. M- mooted. Yeah, it should uh, it should be noted. But yeah, um, don't believe in them. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't. He does like computers though. I love the computers. Boy, howdy. Yeah, yeah, he's saying about a river and stuff, and that's pretty cool. Because who doesn't like a river? Who doesn't love a river? What about Old Man River? Do you know where you can find an Old Man River, Jarrett? Hmm. Does one run through a particular town and or city that we're familiar with? Well, Jarrett, I'll have you know about that uh, somebody's been sitting on a little meme for quite some time here. A little screenshot from a bona fide Criterion film Ooh. for some time. So that's going to come up here. But uh, when's the last time you hit the Old Man River on an <laughs> inner tube? Never. Me, me also. Yeah. People, I've been invited before, and it's like, so I can go where there's like 
Old Man River always has like high fecal warnings. It's like, oh, don't drink the water. That fecal stuff is up high, and it's, and then everyone's like, we'll go tubing. Well, the, the dudes on the like embankment just jerking off in the bushes. Uh, what news do you subscribe oh, to? That, you don't remember that story? Is that Creeps News Now? Uh, that was like years ago, but it did it did go down. I, I think they failed to catch them. I mean, to be honest. And I don't mean this like in a weird way, but like, is there any situation where there isn't the man a fapping? dude? <laughs> yeah. Like just somewhere around, like no. I kind of assume it's happening right now. Constantly. It could be happening everywhere. right in front of you and you wouldn't know. You don't know where my hands are. That's actually true. I can't see his hands. And I, I have it on good authority that Jared doesn't wear pants when we record episodes. What are you talking about? Look at these, look at these. Ooh, these leggings. No, no, no. Jared has. Jared just lifted up nothing but flesh. Was it a leg? Was it something else? Was it a ham? I can't say. Could have been. I, a, on, I, could have been a ham. Could have been a honey ham. I mm-hmm. I genuinely do not know. Yeah. Genuinely, do not know. Absolutely. His, what what do you know about Emperor Jones? <laughs> I know Osmosis Jones. Yeah, do. Yeah, do you know about Osmosis Jones? It's shown <laughs> in high school. It's year, years round. You want to hear a, a synopsis for Emperor Jones? Sure. Because this is 1933. This is pre-code. This is some... Uh, Ooh, I like that. Of this before we had taglines, apparently. Mm-hmm. Unscrupulously ambitious. Brutus Jones escapes from jail after killing a guard and through bluff and bravado. Finds himself uh, the emperor of a Caribbean island. Uh, I guess. That's kind of what happens, right? That is what happens. Yeah. So, uh, let's just take us, take us through uh, Emperor Jones, which is a movie that I had never seen before. Mm-hmm. And uh, see, see how it shapes up. So, uh, it opens up, I guess it's like a Baptist church. Uh, it's a fun church where they sing. Yeah, lots of singing. Lots of singing. Um, and they're, they're, they're sending off Brutus Jones, who's going to go be a porter on a train. Man, are they going to miss him. Oh, yeah. He really brought that yeah. place alive with his booming, <laughs> boombastic yeah. singing. That's right. So, uh, his, his, his best girl, uh, Dolly, sends him mm-hmm. off saying, you ain't going to go get mixed up in those fast girls, are you? And he's like, oh, no, not at all. <laughs> five what minutes, else does he five, say? Is it five minutes later. <laughs> it's just like, oh, yeah, this, this dude's already on the... As soon as he strays off the path, RJ, he, boom, he's, he's, he starts work and he's off and running. I feel like you were going to say something like this dude's on the floozies, the prowl or something, yeah. you know, Yeah. on the hunt. Yeah. Potentially. Opportunities throwing themselves at him. His best buddies who are just lighting up women. Um, They're doing what to the women? Lighting them up. Oh, and, okay. And, and then it's like, no biggie. They just like, hey, this is Brutus. You should dance with him. And you go, interesting. Hmm. Uh, so mm. the one thing I'll note this with this movie, kind of like right off the bat, is it doesn't feel like a lot of other movies. I don't know if you had that experience. Like there is like a, it doesn't. When you think of like nineteen thirty three mm-hmm. movie making, I don't know. I, I watched Pandora's Box not that long ago. That movie is like what five years like older than this, I think. Mm-hmm. Maybe, um, and that movie felt like you know a silent <laughs> film. And it felt like everything was happening on sets. Um, but th- this just felt like, I don't know, char- like, th- <laughs> felt very uh, believable. It felt like uh, non-professional actors, but these are people who are like able to just like settle into their roles. And just it, it just felt like, uh, like you were in these spaces a lot of the time when mm-hmm. watching it. Especially these rooms where it's like the craps games are being played. Um, these um, uh, basically it's like where you're going on your off hours when you're not working on the train mm-hmm. uh, being the porter knowing people's secrets mm-hmm. um, and knowing how to play the game so you can angle yourself up so you're soon on the, the president's uh, 
train Cart. car, train car, and uh, you're you're getting to know a little bit about the ins and outs about some deals here and there. Maybe you can uh, uh, leverage that to making a little bit more scratch and get told, well, I think there's big plans for you down in Georgia on another train because I don't want you, uh, you know, you can't be trusted. But Cart. at the same time, yeah. yeah anyway, so. We're we're watching kind of like the the rise, so called, of uh, Brutus, mm-hmm. who doesn't really get called by his first name very much in this movie. Uh, they call him Jonesy, Mo, uh, Mo, and uh, J Owens. <laughs> J Owens. J Owens. Yeah. I, I I like the Jonesy one. They go Jonesy. But, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? doing over here? But. Yeah, you get some uh, exciting games of craps. Yeah, talking. Can about, you talking about big dicks? Yeah, can you explain the verbiage here for me, please? Uh, I don't know. I, I it was all new to me. Oh, you you don't know about big dick craps? I don't. Okay. <laughs> but they, they they yelled that a lot in this movie, and when you're watching with subtitles, it's real. It's great. Okay, let's see, craps, Whoop. big dicks, craps how, how, rules, yeah. the big dick. 10 is the ah. so-called big dick surely a reference to the size of a of a certain part of a gentleman's anatomy what okay a 10 is a big dick apparently yeah 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 i would I'd, I'd say so 10 big dick the big one on the end puppy paws a pair of sunflowers <laughs> oh there, yeah there, there's some podcast chuckles <laughs> Oh man, it's good stuff. Puppy paws is apparently the other word for it. Mm-hmm. It's good stuff. So, so Paul Robeson, um, yeah, sure, the the, the, the singer, uh, he started yeah, doing sure. some, doing some acting. He was kind of a a, a crossover uh, hit, I guess, with audiences. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's this was based on a play or a book. Yeah, no, it's based uh, on a play. It's, it's a something. nineteen. It's a nineteen twenties play, uh, same title. And in one of these one of these productions, uh, Paul Robeson actually played Emperor Jones, and it kind of became this you know, you know, successful enough. They're like, let's make the screenplay, and we'll use this big star of Oz, Paul Robeson. He'll do it. Mm-hmm. One of the things, and this is kind of getting ahead of ourselves. So the that little like short documentary that is the next spine number. Uh, it, it, did you feel like it played a, kind of fast and loose with chronology? Like it was just it, like it was like jumping forward and then jumping back like five, ten years at a time. And you go, wait, what? Like why are we why are we talking about this yeah. right now? Like we're not even we haven't his movie career stuff. It's weird because it's like a it's a documentary or sorry it's a box set. It's about the film and it's got this 1979 documentary that like is very much like a surface level kind of look at mm. Paul Robeson. They're like, oh, and then this happened. And he was a great American, and it's all direct, and it's all narrated by Sidney Poitier. Yeah, um, I mean, not only is it does it jump around all over, but like, wouldn't you like save something like that for the end of the box set? You think? Well, maybe uh, people need some context, like like us. <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe it's good where it is. I just when I watched it. Like, they don't, like, get too into other movies because this thing's only 30 minutes long. But I was kind of like, it's like, are they going to talk about all the movies that we're going to watch in the next, like, 17 weeks that we're doing this thing? Or and then there's that because there's that kind of sequence where it's like, ah, here's some great actors who played Othello, white mm-hmm. guy in black makeup. <laughs> white, another actor in white and black makeup <laughs> Orson Welles <laughs> yeah. and Lawrence then they're like, Olivier. like why is Paul Robeson different than these other five people <laughs> it's like indeed <laughs> they do they do draw attention they do oh, like, for, acknowledge they, it. for sure but man they could have yeah. they could have gone a little harder on that um because it's like one of those like yelp yeah I know but make it safe for the the audiences back then <laughs> they could handle it I know it's how would you handle it? So, anyways, uh, yeah. So Emperor Jones. So anyway, uh, Brutus is running, living that like fast and easy lifestyle. All of a sudden, uh, he's taken to the games. He's running girls. He doesn't care if they're jealous. He's like kicking them off his payroll 
when they, when they ask for too much. It's mm-hmm. all very. I mean, probably the exchanges between her uh, or, or him and the, his like one girlfriend, the new girlfriend. It's a little little quick, and there's some some of the de- delivery doesn't quite work all that wonderfully. But mm-hmm. anyway, this this kind of sets the stage though of, of this jealousy. Uh, that's ruined because so his buddy that he works with on the trains uh, that that's his girl and he's kind of uh, seeing her on the side even though he's got a girl on the side but he don't care about anybody anymore because he, 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 everything's turning up uh, big dick for uh, for big Jonesy dick. so anyway he uh, eventually winds up going to a kind of like a I don't know black bar. Uh, where there's craps happening. It's like a craps club. Yeah. Or and, not a craps club, but yeah. it's like a, a bar. A bar. And his buddy and his his, yeah. his buddy that he's no longer friends with, they're both there. And the, the hostility and tension is there. Because obviously his friend now knows that this guy's been banging his girl on the side. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's yeah, this tension building up between the two of them uh, as they're calling out the, the names of their dice. And this results in uh, a knife being drawn... And uh, his friend's trying to stick him, but uh, Brutus is able to overpower him and basically stabs the guy with his own knife, which is one of those things about knives where it's like, yeah, you could you could carry a knife to protect yourself, but it seems like there's a very high chance you just might wind up getting stabbed. Uh, when was the last time you got stabbed? Uh, not. Uh, not. I knew a dude who got I... stabbed at a nightclub once. Oh, good. He He survived. That's good. I should I should I should mention yeah. Right. What did you think of that fighting? Did you think it was authentic? Uh, yeah. I mean, I felt it was it had a good energy to it. Yeah. Uh, what, what I really loved though was the kind of the how it finished off, where the guy just stabbed and dead, and then everybody in the bar just goes right back to uh, gambling, and it's like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Because of course it's like, yeah, there is this thing like, who are you going to? Who are they going to go to? Go to the police? I mean. The police people showed die. up, and they look around. They're like, "Ah, you guys! <laughs> people die every day. People right? die every day. Right. And it's like, well, it's not worth the hassle because it's like you go to them. They'll be like, "Wait, well, maybe you did this," because they're they're not the most uh, problem in this in this period of time. Maybe uh, you know, if you're uh, you know a racialized person in America, you might not want to go run to the cops because they might be like, "Well, I don't want to really do anything," and uh, you sure look right for what we need, and then you, you find yourself in jail. Because you don't know. You just don't know. Yeah. I know. I know. You know what one of my favorite memes is, Jared? You remember it? You know how people said we need to talk about memes more? You ever seen that meme from Spider-Man where it's like the cop talking to Spider-Man and the cop says, you better be white under that mask. <sighs> Classic stuff. Classic. Cla- classic stuff, man. Yeah. Just all around, like, you ever seen a classic? Because that's just some classic stuff. That's what I got right there. Well, so classic. Jones yeah. finds himself on a chain gang, mm-hmm. uh, doing some hard labor for this. Uh, some some would call this a murder, but it seemed like he was self defense. But uh, uh, yeah, it does. It definitely is self defense, or it's, it's what it should be. It should be, but again, uh, we don't see. There's no. There, they don't have time for courts trial stuff in this, right? This is about yeah. keeping keeping things flowing. And he's singing because we gotta make sure that um, our, our man sings, our Paul Robeson sings. That's what he's. That's what he's there for. Mm-hmm. So anyway, the uh, the white guards, of course, not not a fan of this singing, and uh, they, they always have something to prove to him. And then so they get him to like open up the the hot box where there's mm-hmm. a guy who's been locked up in there. Uh, for trying to escape, and he, they, the guy, the one particular guard was like, "Take this club and beat him." And he's like, "I'm not going to do that." He's like, "Well, I'm going to beat you." And so, of course, he takes a beating, and then yeah. the guard starts beating the the poor man up on the ground. And Robeson's uh, Brutus uh, goes over, grabs a an axe or shovel or whatever, and just like, kind of like off camera kills him mm-hmm. <laughs> because uh, that would be something you wouldn't. Uh, be really wanting to show uh, in the, to audiences at the time is black on white violence. It I, happens off panel. Off panel. But anyway, he escapes. Uh, he does one pretty bold thing where he kind of jumps into like one of these like cause it's like a quarry, I guess. Mm-hmm. He like jumps into this like rock truck. 
this like yeah it's hauling away rocks and he just tells the guy with the um the lift or whatever the scoop just to drop the rocks on me <laughs> and i'm like that's like risky isn't it <laughs> like you could just get killed anyways he's okay because yeah. this is only like a half hour into the movie or something like that so now he's yeah. on the run he's he's on a, he goes to see his one girlfriend gets a file sh- shaves off his uh you know foot cuffs uh and he catches a a boat to go to i guess like you know uh, the global south somewhere and like you know wherever he's going to go and on his way uh he's he's working he decides yeah. you no know, you know what shoveling uh coal into this uh steam thing uh it ain't worth it he's like what's that island over there <laughs> it's like oh, a bunch of people just live over there people because a certain word starts popping up at this point rj what kind of word, Jarrett? Tell uh, me while I blow my nose. Oh, a, a, wor- a word that begins with the letter N. And uh, we're, we're going to hear that word a lot at this point. Okay. Do you mean like... Um... Now, I don't want to be ignorant, but do you mean like the word with an N would be like... Like something pizza related? <laughs> Does it got to do with pizza? Like N anchovies? Yeah, like anchovies or yeah. an- aneroni. Yeah. You know about aneronis? <laughs> knees. Knees? Oh, man. You got to watch your knees. Yeah. My knees are getting creaky now, actually. Uh-oh. Yeah. Years of abuse, I so, suppose. So, so those stairs. Uh, yeah, those five stairs I have in my house. Mm-hmm. Fuck, it's punishing. It's not going to get punishing. any better. So, yeah. uh <laughs> Jones's brilliant idea uh it's just like he just jumps off the boat and swims to shore i mean it's not stupid if it works right and it did work because because of movie movie magic it's Mm -hmm. like that was quite a distance he swam uh yeah i mean he swims what like a quarter mile something like that or even more full mile could be a couple miles eight swimming mile who knows? He could have hit that current wrong, and been he'd been fucked. So anyway, mm. he he reaches the island. Uh, he finds out there's sort of like this, like I don't know, self-appointed baron guy who's got mm-hmm. like this kind of like militia that kind of probably uh, lords over the people who live on the island, and they just kind of trade in like simple farming stuff like mm. essentially uh getting exploited by oh, what's the guy's name smithers played smithers by, played by deadly digs oh boy this guy mm. he likes he likes pizza too rj he likes saying a certain word that also has starts with n neat oh, neat yeah he thinks yeah. jones is a real neat guy yeah he he sure likes to let him know how neat he <laughs> thinks he thinks he is eh? very neat uh yeah. so Anyway, uh, this guy's a scumbag. Uh, and basically, th- so so Jones shows up. He's like, you know, bedraggled and just swam there. And he's kind of being shoved. He gets brought to this, like, you know, king on this island. And the guy's like, just toss him. <laughs> like, send, mm-hmm. send, put him. Send him on the next boat out of here. Lock him up. And, uh, of course, this uh, Smithers guy's like, well, I'll buy him. <laughs> I guess <laughs> that's what Smithers does. He likes to buy black men. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, and force them to work for him. Yeah, he's it's very open about it. Very open, and you're like, whoa. Mm-hmm. But but man, you gotta keep your eye on Jones because this guy he's he's got schemes going on too. And he kind of hustle, he moves on up to Smithers, um, and uh, they they kind of have like a I don't know what you call it, <laughs> uh, bad guy buddy comedy thing going on. Light, very light on the comedy. Yeah, it's just like you're a bad dude. I could be a bad dude and, and want to become a, wor- and a worse dude. Would like to be a bad dude. Let's be bad dudes together. Together, and but they, there's always one badder dude. Yeah, that's right. And so they start exploiting. Uh, Jones starts teaching the, the the people that live on this island about gambling. So he he teaches them about big dicks. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so what ends up happening is, uh. Jones moves in and makes a play uh, with his very convoluted and extremely dangerous 
guns bullet swap play where it's like mm. I switch this guy's bullets. It's like he says, "Let me tell you here, man. What if you shot Never me? Leave your gun around near. This, this was remind me of a a little, a little film article called Dumb and Dumber. We're talking about the body armor. It's like, what if he shot you in the face? And then it's what like, if he shot yeah, you in the face? that's a risk we were willing to take. Uh huh. So anyway, yeah, it works what, out what if well you got a him. new gun? But he tells him, you have to kill me with a silver bullet. I, it's weird that he says that because it's like, you're, why are you opening up a vulnerability? He could he could have just said, I cannot be killed. Do you know what I mean? And then right. that would have liked... Uh... And, and they would have taken him at his word. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I mean... Are you familiar, RJ, with a little thing called hubris? Hubris. I know about melees. Yeah. Are they related in any way? <laughs> George melees. George Malays? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Anyway. So, um, yeah, Jones becomes the emperor of this little place, and the power just corrupts him immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a real jerk. Beaten, yeah. Beaten people. Uh, Lashing, giving out lashings. Oh, lashes left and right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not great. But yeah, it's like about how absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Is that a Spider-Man quote? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's what, that's what Spider-Man's about. Is that from Spider-Man 2? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So anyways, uh, Jones go, pu- pushes too far, but he does appoint some cool people. Um, mm-hmm. There's like, what is it, like the Baron of Baltimore? <laughs> Stuff like that. There's all the names of these yeah. places back then. I thought that was really cool. Um, and they just have these like these these people, these like husbands and wives, all dressed out, decked out in regalia. And, and uh, yeah, I, I, I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, but anyway, he pushed too much, too many beatings, um, and suddenly the, the people have turned. And mm-hmm. uh, he's like, well, I don't care. I just, I'll just leave now with all the money. They can't, even if they try to kill me, it's like the money's already elsewhere. Because I, I'm smart. Yeah. I take care of myself. Um, but it's then some, um, head, some mind games are played. Mm-hmm. And ghosts rj specters of guilt real ghosts or metaphorical ghosts uh, that's hard to say mm. it's hard to say i think you do you know about metaphorical well ghosts, we're, we're, ta- we're, we're talking about hubris i think there, there might be some real specters some real spir- spirits going on perhaps or okay. mind or mind ghosts you could be i don't know it could go either way uh, hey that's for the viewer to decide th- this sequence is fairly long even mm-hmm. for the fact that this movie is like 78 minutes long, this is about the last quarter. And yeah, yeah it occupies quite the chunk of the runtime. It seems mm-hmm. redundant. It could have been tightened up. But again, 1933, um, pacing is a little bit off. And it's also based on this, ad- you know, it's an adaptation of a film, uh, or sorry, of a, a play. But anyways, uh, yeah, that silver bullet thing really bites him in the ass. And then, Where does uh, it get him? Right in the ass. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, so he's vanquished. Yeah, I mean, who hasn't been from time to time? Who you know what I mean? Been? And Smithers yep. gets like a last word in. <laughs> he goes, "I'm Smithers. Remember me? Remember me? Remember I?" <laughs> he says, "I'm Smithers, baby." And then everyone goes, "Huh?" Yeah, classic Smithers, though. Yeah. One of the best. One of the best. One of the best. Yeah. So, anyways, um, I didn't mind this movie. Okay. I okay. thought that uh, it just, yeah, we've, we've been watching a long string of <laughs> movies recently, RJ. Yes, we have. And I, and I feel like it really dragged us down. Um in, did in, you, in a lot of ways. Even did like, you name drop one of those films? Well, even like, you know, the Monsters and Mad Men collection. Yeah. They're pretty lackluster stuff. When, mm-hmm. when Corridors of Blood's the, the peak of the box set. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of haunted stranglers going on. Some <laughs> some uh, First Man to the Moon. Where it's like, I don't remember anything about those movies already. But even like even the, the highfalutin stuff. Your mouchettes. Um, you're kind of mm-hmm. like, oh... Mouchette, eh? Okay, right. Mouchette. Mouchette. So this kind of was a pulpy, straightforward movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it it felt different enough. Like it felt like amateurish at times. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
there also seemed like uh, the performances um, varied quite a bit too. But it just it did not feel like a 1933 movie that we've watched before. It's not like a uh, fuck Scaramouche, right? Scaramouche. Like, which came out the year before, I think 1932, and mm-hmm. that thing feels like a, an absolute dreadful relic of just like who the fuck cares about this? Emperor Jones is kind of like you know this is probably barely a B movie, but mm-hmm. at least it kind of is. I don't know. It's doing something. Uh, and it, and it doesn't feel, I mean, you kind of know what's going to happen way before it happens, but at the same mm-hmm. time there was sort of like, a, Oh, like I, I still want to watch to find out what's what that thing is. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how to also put it, but you know, I thought this was, thought this was all right. Um, I, I didn't really, I, I had no idea what to expect from this Paul Robeson box set. And then I saw mm-hmm. Emperor Jones, you see this poster, this like mm-hmm. really classic 1933 neat. painted poster of him luxuriating. Kind of looks like uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, the, red and uh, the yellow. Does, do you know what I mean? He does actually. Yeah. Which is timely because you're such a black uh, Adam. Is, is he fan. wearing? Is he wearing white pants? He might be wearing white pants, Jared. Holy crap! Yeah. See, this is when confluence comes together. Where would you? C- convergence. Yeah, Convert well, my, my 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 favorite DC event. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought you liked um, what was it, Villains Month? What was that? Uh, <laughs> do you remember that one? Yeah, Villains yeah. Month. Yeah, Black Adam had a Villains Month comic, I think. It probably I did. Think. Where would you rate rank this between, uh, like, in terms of this and Tales of Hoffman? Oh God, I would watch Emperor Jones. Uh, any day of the week over Tales of Hoffman. Oh, over Tales of Hoffman? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Yep. Definitely. De- definitely Tales of Hoffman. I, definitely I, but, Tales but, of Hoffman. I, yeah, I, I have a soft spot for uh, pre-code stuff, generally. I mean, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. There's, there's something, even like when they're kind of maybe not the best movie or anything like that, we're like, oh man, I can't wait to watch Emperor Jones again. That's not, it's not happening. Let's just be real frank yeah, here. But, I understand. Uh, I, I I'm kind of bummed out though that that um, Solomon's Mine movie uh, is not in the box set because that's the or King Solomon's Mine. That's the big one. No, but like it looks like that could be a cool one to watch too. King Solomon's Mines, yeah, from 1937. I would wa- I would watch that too, and in this box mm. set, one day we'll watch Showboat. That is Criterion Collectionized. But I think it's like that only came out like a couple of years ago, so we're a good decade away from that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, these are just kind of like weird little offcuts of uh, movies that are kind of just I think there to put Paul Robeson in the collection. And I mean, like, yeah, there's <laughs> he, he fits here better <laughs> than uh, a great many uh, films that we've watched, I think. Mm-hmm. But uh, what did you think of Emperor Jones, RJ? Emperor Jones. I thought Tom Jones was the one and only Emperor Jones. You know about Tom Jones? Yeah, I remember Tom Jones. Yeah, he's in Vegas vacation. Yeah. So that's a uh, that's a good show. Um, yeah, I thought this was all right. Like, uh, I'm kind of with you. I I do like some pre code stuff. Like, uh, I will say, like, when whenever he was in a situation, I was like, I feel like I know how this is gonna end. But then uh, when he would jump from situation to situation kind of kept me guessing i was like all right so this guy's a church boy that's cool that's cool and it's like he's gonna be a porter all right because i didn't look into this i was like is he gonna be the like emperor of the north <laughs> like the master of the train and then it was like he was on a train for like five seconds yeah and then he's out of the train i was like oh shit this isn't a train movie <laughs> yeah he transitioned out of the train life <laughs> yeah he was out of the train life instantly and i was like oh that's not what this is i was like is this a crafts movie i was like gambler's back i was like look at him he's got that big dick energy um, and then, and then he goes to jail, and I was like, "Wait a minute, is this a jail movie?" And then he was in jail, and then he gets bought, and I was like, "Wait a minute." Well, he was in is jail. It... He was in jail for a, a hot minute. And, yeah, and, and then he was, now he's on a boat, and now Ooh. he's like swimming to this island. That, well, and then and and now he's like getting locked up again it's it's very pulpy like it's just like and then this happens yeah. and then this happens and this happens and then we actually settle into the emperor jones portion of the, of yeah. the film which is a yeah and that's what i mean like it bounced around a lot where it was like for a while i was kind of like 
I don't know what's going to happen next. I was like, I don't know where this goes because I didn't look into it or anything like that. So then when he actually ends up on the island, I was like, ah, all right. I was like, maybe he'll be here for a while. And he was for a bit. Um, he was still doing his big dick stuff and uh, just tricking the people. And I do think Paul Robeson does have a um, – and he's got a, a presence, you know. It's very commanding. Something about his voice and – I don't know, the way he, like, moves his mouth, he's just like, it's, it's so stern. You're just like, God damn. Yeah, right, you know, he's, he's right, got... That's a man. Uh, I, I believe he's, he's got some poise. Mm-hmm. Poise. 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 He likes that. Poise. Yeah, so uh, he, he is... Um, he's entertaining to watch because you're just like, man, this dude's burly. I like him. Dig him. So he does that. Uh, and uh, I liked all the Emperor stuff, and, you, and then you get into... Some uh, Idi Amin Dada type stuff. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Big yeah. Daddy himself. Uh, you, you see a little bit of that and you go, okay. See, I, okay. I, I, I got gotcha. you. Um, and then it turns and then we do get the ghost show, which I, um, so I, I was pretty cool with this movie. And like, did I love this movie? Nah, but I, I was entertained by it, which yeah. is kind of like you're saying. That, like, That's all you can ask for these and that's days. That's all you can ask for is just being mildly entertained. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I'm on board. I'm on board. I did think the one kind of downside to this movie, if there was one for me, is just uh, the ghost scene goes on forever, I yeah. felt like. Because of how, like, short all the other intervals are. Like, the ghost scene, like, it was it was going on for, like, ten minutes. And I was like, okay, I gotcha. I was like, this is probably done soon. So I pulled up my phone, looked at it for a second, put it down. And it was still going. I was like, it's a little longer than I thought it would be. And I checked the time code and there was like 10 minutes left still. And I was like, Jesus Christ. I was like, how long is this? And I like if, to me, the, the ghost scene felt like 20 minutes of this movie. Was it 20 minutes? Probably not. I, uh, it was about 15. Yeah, it's a, like, which is a long time, especially since every other sequence in this movie is what, like six minutes max. Yeah, pretty much. Other other than the emperor stuff, well, which is I, maybe 15 also. I'd be curious about how the play is written. Like, does it just start with him arriving at the island and then everything gets kind of backfilled? I think you need that something earlier on beforehand to show him as like a con. Like, it doesn't have to be all the stuff. Like, I don't. I don't think you need the porter stuff or the town stuff. Like, maybe, but I do think you almost need the the gambler stuff I just think- to show that he's like a he's kind of like a con man almost. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I feel like he, I, I'm imagining what this would be as like a 1980 movie that's mm-hmm. like, you know, widescreen. I'm not sure you'd have playing uh, Jones, but mm-hmm. you could do the same story. It has some like <laughs> Tangerine Dream score to it. Uh, and and this, this, this movie could be like some, some hot business. I, I would completely rewrite it, but yeah. yeah, you could do like a make this like a two hour movie. And I think it's got legs. I think there's only two people who could play Emperor Jones today. Okay, this is my what, dream. What casting. about 1980? Okay, 1980, even better. You know who would have been Emperor Jones in 1980? Who? Tony Todd. Uh, he would have been way too young. And he's like, I don't know. Tony Todd. Because I, I always think about when he shows up in X-Files. Actually, okay, wait. I got, I got it. Do you you know in um From Dusk Till Dawn... The guy who like fights Tom Savini and he's like, all right, sex machine. And he, he's like that dude at the huge. Mo- who is that guy again? Who's that? Who's the big dude in uh, from dusk till dawn? It's, pro- it's probably like Jim Brown or something. Maybe it is Jim Brown. Uh, you're is it Jim Brown? I'm not sure. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the cast. Downtown Jimmy Brown. Is that who's in from dusk till dawn? Fred this Williamson. Guy, he- Fred Williamson. See that? I don't know. He's that. That lends to be like kind of more of like a black exploitation, like cheap movie. I don't know. I just think that dude has also has a poise, a bravitas, as some would say. I've seen I, I've seen a lot of Fred Williamson stuff, and I don't know. I, I wouldn't want him in this role. I'm, I'm thinking no. like I'm I'm thinking prestige movie, like Sidney Poitier. No, is that who you're thinking no, of? No, Sidney Poitier is not big enough. Okay, well, who would you cast as? Uh, I don't know. What about now? Consider this. What about Mister T? <laughs> if it was done in the eighties, no, not as exploitation. Man, you're not. Allowed, you are definitely not allowed to cast people. 
ever again. I think ever. I think Fred Williamson's a good pick, mm. and I think other people would agree with me. Okay, uh, what about now, RJ? What about now? What? Who, who, who's 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 playing Emperor Jones in twenty twenty two? Yeah, fifty cent. Yeah, hundred percent. He's, he's pretty old though now. He is old, but Emperor Jones is a little like. How old is Emperor Jones supposed to be? Like thirty or yeah, like twenty? I, I don't think he's a very old. Let's see, how old? Like was, under thirty. I'm curious how old Paul Robeson was when he was in this movie, because this is the thing though. This is like a weird slice scale. Okay, he was thirty six. It... He was thirty six. Yep. Okay. All right. Who's gonna play? Thirty five. Thirty five. He was thirty five. Yeah. Okay. Do you know Pete Davidson? Uh huh. Because maybe he could play Emperor Jones. Okay. That's maybe a, just. That's a different movie, RJ. It could be. It could be. Okay. No, I. I mean, I do think Fifty Cent would have been good. Like ten years ago, Fifty Cent would have been good. Okay. And the movie I would want to watch is what I mean. Okay. So, current day, I'll think about that for a second. Who's the new Paul Robeson? <laughs> oh, you know what it is. You you still haven't watched Atlanta yet, right? Nope. That guy he he's in Atlanta. He's in lots of movies now too. He was in uh what was that movie? Um the Marvel one that nobody watched. Oh. Uh Eternals. <laughs> okay. Uh Brian Tyree Henry. That dude could be current day Paul yeah. Rubson. Does he sing? In Atlanta, he is Paperboy and he's a rapper. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna give it to Brian Tyree. Okay. Henry. Um, and then we also watched for 30 whole minutes, uh, Paul Robeson, Tribute to an Artist. Uh, the yeah, synopsis is, this Academy Award winning documentary short, Paul Robeson, Tribute to an Artist, narrated by Sidney Poitier, traces the career of Paul Robeson through his activism and his socially charged performances of his signature song, Oh Man River. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's exactly what it is. This is a kind of a puff piece. I think it came out right after he died or like shortly after he had died. So it was whipped together pretty quick. Yeah, there's something like there's I feel like they could do a lot more with this story. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, we died in 76 and I think it came out in 79. So it was a few years after the fact. But I don't know how many people talk about Paul Robeson these days. So, I mean, that is one of the uh, benefits, I guess, of Criterion putting out these box sets because it does put attention toward Mm -hmm. figures that you just otherwise would not talk about. Because this is like, often there's like this thing that's emphasizing that he's like, he was a communist. And it's like, I don't even know if he is actually specifically a communist as much as it kind of more, like you you kind of noticed, like this was like a civil rights uh, advocate. And, uh, but there's also kind of uh, supported, you know, Soviet policies, which of course, like that was just like a no go. Mm-hmm. You just don't do those sort of things. But um, yeah, like, but his like the, the the documentary does a pretty sloppy job of mm-hmm. honing in on anything he had to say at all, other mm-hmm. than like him being an activist and going to like you know pro labor stuff and people like you know in Australia and you know singing and the fact that like the song, the lyrics change as time goes on, um, to emphasize certain things. Uh, depending on the audience that he's singing to. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and then, I mean, there's like the footage of him, like, of course, this is like post 1950, and, you know, with your, uh, you have your list of subversive organizations type of shit going on in HUAC uh, going on, where you're like, they're trying to ferret out the commies. Mm-hmm. And this guy's like, oh, he's sympathetic, he's traveling around the world, and he, he's at the Paris uh, treaties and stuff like that. Um, and he's singing, and he's, he's, he's and he's singing in Chinese like, during the like, yeah. Uh, and they're like, uh, uh-uh, uh, that's not what that's not what McCarthy's wants. So, uh, so they take away his passport. They they fuck him out of the ability to like travel freely uh, as mm-hmm. he would want, uh, because they're just like, well, it's not in the interest of America for you to be able to travel on this. So he gets like stuck in for America 10 for 10 years like, basically a decade uh, until it gets overturned in the Supreme Court because it's not like because again this is where uh, totalitarian state stuff or like authoritarian state stuff kicks in and uh, dictates mm-hmm. how a person can uh, move about their life and this guy's uh, kind of falls along the line of the 
you know, these sacrificial lambs in terms of uh, being ground into the gears of like not being able to do what you want because of uh, mm-hmm. opinion of opinion. And that's what it seems like most like he, like he kind of said he might have been not even a supporter, just like sympathetic to it. And like from what I could tell from this 30 minute doc, his big thing was just like, shouldn't people be allowed to like have any political view? And they're like fuck no yeah they're like get out of here yeah and he's like okay well i mean this is the thing right it's like yeah this note here is like robeson's political activities began with his involvement with unemployed workers and anti-imperialist students in britain and it continued with his support for the republican cause during the spanish civil war and his involvement Mm -hmm. in the council on african affairs so you know he was against you know fascists and bad people because man there's like the that clip of uh (laughs) Uh, what was it? I think a concert he was trying to do in the uh, southern states, and you know, you, oh, yeah. you, you get a little slice of southern hospitality, and there's this guy that shows up in multi in two clips, and it's the same dude. I swear, he's really mm-hmm. fond of that word "neat" as well. He likes saying how neat uh, Paul Robeson is. He say, "Hey, you neat man, hey, you're neat. why don't you go back to neat town?" <laughs> And Paul Robin says, "Is like, all right, I guess I'll leave." Well, it's like yeah, the concert happens, and then but no, it's like because yeah, it's not just like he has to leave. It's like oh no, he performs, and the people who went to it, they 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 have to like drive through the rabble, and then the police just stand there and let mm-hmm. beatings happen, and they go, "Oh come on, guys, you know mm-hmm. what you signed up for? You know people just need to blow off a little steam." And like, oh, boys will and be like, boys. And it's like, oh, look, they're, they're, they're that it was like <laughs> white people are beating that black man. And you mm-hmm. go, huh? And oh, there's that guy again talking about how neat everything is. No, yep. he says, I'm here to tell you. And Paul Robeson played football. Yeah, until they erased his history. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, whatever. In, in retaliation for uh, yeah. his unfavorable political views at uh, was it Rutgers? Or, yeah, Columbia. Was, or Columbia, one of the one of the places you went to, one of those, and they're just like, they're like they they like uh, expunged him from the team, making the team the first ever ten man team in football history, and it's like, but it wasn't because he existed. <laughs> just just because you don't like him now doesn't mean that you can. I mean, I guess that is what they do. They, well, they erase RJ, people's history. Ne- ne- never underestimate the pettiness of white men. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> like, look kids, at the stuff yeah. I do every week. Look, look, this podcast is a prime example. This podcast is the example, which is too bad. No. Too, too bad. Yeah. So anyways, we got that going for us. We sure do. Yeah. We sure but- do. So this is this is all well and good and this is cool, but I, I do. There was an Australian guy who uh, watched this this week, and his kind of thing was like, "This should just be an extra," and I kind of agree with that. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, it is it is like I do think it is helpful, but fine that yeah, I mean, it's it's, 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 it's a strange it's, spine number on its own, right? Is what I mean, but yeah. yeah, sometimes that's how they do it. Uh, I guess for yeah. our purposes, it forced us to watch it, so yeah, we, we know a little bit more. Yeah, and I mean, it's good for that because, yeah, I do know more about him now. And I wouldn't have watched this unless we had to. But uh, it does seem it's like a 30-minute little uh, floof. It does seem like a strange spine number. But, you know, who am I to say? I don't know. You're nobody. I sure ain't no Paul Robeson, I'll tell you that much. Sure, sure not. Well, not with that squeaky voice of yours. Huh? <laughs> Huh? Yeah. I'm not nasally. Yeah, you heard You're me. You're nasally. What else I is I have that? a booming voice. No. I'm booming. I was just curious what else uh, the director of the Emperor of the Emperor Jones has directed. Deadly Murphy. I think he did Osmosis Jones. Oh. That's yeah. interesting. He did that. There's like this experimental film. Uh, he apparently co-worked on or did something on uh, Ballet Mécanique with Fernard Leger which is weird because I've seen this thing at least a couple times in uh, in art hit, art school RJ mm. what school? in the art school the real one? the real one or the fake one uh, some stuff with uh, Duke Ellington 
and oh yeah Dunk. I know I, Duke. I know these. Yeah, he's done some uh, short. He did some stuff. Some short works like Dance Macabre. That's cool. Fast, fascinating. Fast Bender. So this is kind say. of like yeah. This is kind of an odd uh, little movie here. We got St. Louis Blues, Queen of the Blues, and this all black cast short. Legendary blues singer Bessie Smith finds her gambler lover Jimmy messing with a pretty younger woman. He leaves and she sings the blues with chorus and dancers. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is pretty cool. When you said some sort of like small and like experimental film, I thought you meant like Eternals or oh, something. Right. Yeah. You know, like something that's like not for everyone, but like if you give it a shot or something, you might find like the joy in it. Mm. You know about joy? Uh, no. I, I know no joy. Oh, okay. So you're doing the criterion creep. Correct. Yeah. Uh, you want to hear from people who have strong opinions? Why would anyone have vague. strong opinions? Uh, uh, they're, very, they're, they're vague opinions. They're, these are, okay. yeah, they're not. Yeah, not too not too hepped up about anything. Well, okay. Right. How about N F half a star? I see him. I cannot rate this. Paul Robeson carries the film with a wonderful performance. The that the film has unpleasant tones running through it, due to the provisions of the Hayes Code. We know that his character, who has killed a man and escaped from prison, will not end living his life happily ever after. But his degeneration back to br- quote brainless African savage unquote was not what I expected Paul Robeson was an extremely Um, intelligent man and talented actor it's a shame the color of his skin meant that he had to play the caricatures that cinema goers were felt able to cope with back then I mean I don't think that's the intent I don't think so either Uh, that seems to be like yeah like it's like he clearly (laughs) like could have not done the role and he I th- did. He he played it multiple times, and I, yeah. If you, I don't know. That seems like somebody who wants to just be offended. I think, I think I, that's a person okay. who is uh, applying like outrage to something that doesn't actually involve them. You know what? Like what? you know, classic white woman stuff, Jared. Whoa. You know what I mean? Whoa. Because I feel like it was just like, Uh-oh. no, this is just a dude who gambles a lot and like manipulates things. I don't think his race is. Yeah. Oh, can we talk? Well, I mean, there is like we one could talk about that element to it and like the yeah. role, but it's like, but this is also about power. And I mean, there yeah, was an element is. to me like I think that it's a different context. I mean, this this kind of would fall into like the the Scarface camp, right? I mean, sure, because this isn't just like well, because he has to be punished because he's black. It's like well, no, it's like that happened to the the, the white gangsters criminals too. Uh, he's just a dude now, who wants. Now one could say that there's like a lack of di- maybe of diversity of depictions of of black men, and this is the one where yeah. oh, this is what happens when they get power is they turn to this. And it's like, well, that's just what this movie's about. I don't yeah. know. This this is some uh, leaping. I, let me tell you about Anne. Anne says that she is a late arrival to the marvelous world of film, which I find interesting. Because does that mean she never watched movies until kind of like late in her life? Do you think that's what she meant? Favorite films include Peppa La Shit, Groundhog Shit, Cinema Parachidio, and this is Spinal Shit. Uh, Half star films include Braveheart, Old Boy, Antichrist, Devil's Rejects, Pink Flamingos, Gummo, and one of Jarrett's favorite films. No, not Maniac. She gave that half a star, too. But Porky's. <laughs> she half-starred Porky's. So these are all half-star movies. Those are all half-star films. Uh-huh. Every one of those. Uh-huh. Just so you know. Okay. So take that for what it is. Yeah, okay. I mean, there you go. Half, half-starring half Maniac. Yeah, that, half a star. That That's the whole enchilada. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She did it, and... You totally you ruined Star Wars for me, Ann. I can't watch it anymore. <laughs> Woke Ann. Shit. Some people call it very dated as well. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a fucking hundred year old movie. <laughs> In ten years, Jared, this movie will be one hundred years old. This movie felt old to me. <laughs> it, it, it just there was no soundtrack. The editing was bad. And you go, okay. I see a lot of people are calling it a terrible adaptation. 
And it's like, are you a big I fan saw, of the source material? Well, they, they saw ropes in, in Harlem in 1928. They'll no. tell you. I mean, I just... I. How big of a fan are you of the, the screen treatment of Emperor Jones? Tell me, please. Tell me. Yeah. Tell me. Right. Any more for them, or are we moving on to tribute? Mm-hmm. Uh... Yeah, we can move on to tribute. There's only like really one that I'll even note. Uh, this is from H- Ombre Palido. Mm-hmm. Two stars. Didn't know much about Paul Robeson before this, and while it was great when covering his acting career, it fell way too short covering his political life. Robeson was based to all hell. Based, RJ. This documentary was not. Okay. <laughs> Just say he was a commie. It makes him cooler. I mean, I don't know about cool, but it's just, like, who he was, man. Um, Ombre Polito says, I used to say howdy, ironically, but now I can't stop. That's how it starts, RJ. Big fan of GDT. They just watched those uh, Cabinets of Curiosities as well. Heck yeah. Big fan. Big fan. Let's see. They just watched Green Lantern Beware My Power, <laughs> and they gave it a two star. Oh yeah, so that's cool. That's remember, cool. remember those days, RJ, when you could, when you'd watch like a a DC animated movie. I used to watch them. I, I know. Remember those days? And then you'd I be do. like, in you know, Letterboxd, you'd go on there and be like, I got two stars. And then you'd watch another one, thinking maybe this one will be good. I heard this is the best one they've made yet. It's yeah. the best. It's the best Disney Plus Star Wars show. Batman Andor? Yet. Batman Andor. Bandor. Batman Andor Robin? You might have something on your hands here. They you might, might crack get the case. A- you might be getting a call from John Disney pretty pretty soon here. What about Chris Disney? Chris Disney Chris Disney might have been like, do you know about Chet Hanks? Yeah. Because I think Chris Disney got Chet Hanks. Do you know what I mean? Too many summers. Not enough winters. No. <laughs> no. Exactly. <laughs> Any final thoughts on part one? Of Paul Robeson. Of this film? We, we Yeah, of all these films. we got, That's like, yeah, I don't know. These people who are like, there's not much to say about them. <laughs> they just have I mean, strong opinions about them. And, and the ones that are like negative, it's like, yeah, sure. I sure thought they were fine. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, I think the documentary is like kind of like pretty underwhelming. It's just yeah. like here, you could also read Wikipedia, but this time, it, this one's going to be read by Sidney Poitier. Yeah. And then it's and, always like it feels like there's he's like one minute away from saying and being, being a great American, <laughs> like and, and, yeah. being, and making some weird proclamations because like we don't want to say anything too bad about the greatest country in the world. Yeah. And they say and because America is about freedom, and he was here for the freedom of man. Thank you, John. He, he truly was Bobby. an Ameri- American hero. What? What accent was that, Jerk? <laughs> I don't know. Your, your hair is getting real Brad Duraffy, though. <laughs> is that a good thing? I don't know. Brad Duraff not, not from you. Eyes of Laura Mars? <laughs> no. Jarrett. Actually, Andrea gave me a little trim in the garage the other day. <laughs> yeah. Just a little trim. Just like, a, you know, just like a... A zip. But the scissors we have are real shit ass, and they were pulling my hair, and I was just sitting there crying for like an hour. I was like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> my hair's already dead. I said, stop, he's already dead. Yeah. 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 Crusty. Crazy. Crusty Shackleford. Nope. Anyways. After the break, we're still going. We're hey? we're going to be fighting the ghosts of the people we've killed on this podcast. There's going to be a lot of jokes on it. A lot of jokes we've killed, RJ. On uh, what you have. You're, you're horrible, huh? But we'll kill you with a silver bullet because you're also a werewolf. I might be a wolfman. But I ain't no werewolf. 